Now, the Christian faith is foundational to all that we do at Wesley Mission. The message of Jesus is our guiding light and the motivation for all our work. We are a word and deed ministry and have always had ministers and pastors leading all that we do. We're also fortunate to have a team of dedicated chaplains who help to carry the spiritual and emotional care for our staff, our clients, our volunteers and our friends. Our chaplains play a unique role at Wesley Mission and to tell us more, I'm joined by one of our chaplains, Joe Garrett. Welcome, Joe. It's great to have you here. Chaplaincy has always been an important part of the Wesley Mission story, but not everyone understands the role of a chaplain. What is a chaplain? Look, literally, I see a chaplain at Wesley Mission as someone that just can come alongside of staff and clients in whatever space they need us to be. So obviously, all our chaplains have a very, we have a strong Christian faith. That's the ethos of who we are. We're a Christian organisation. And sometimes people think, oh, if I don't have a strong Christian faith, I could never relate to a chaplain. But that's so far from the truth. Our chaplains are there in the trenches of life with people, with clients, pretty much. I say to our team, we're here to serve the staff and clients of Wesley Mission. And pretty much the staff and clients work out what that looks like for us. We don't have an agenda where we say we only do this, this, this. We're here to come alongside with whatever that looks like. That could be like, um, you know, sitting with a, a foster carer family, one of our amazing volunteers who cares for children in care, sitting with them when maybe they're having some struggles around the child that's in their care at the moment. It could be sitting with a staff member who's maybe lost a loved one. So pretty much a chaplain at Wesley Mission is here to be the hands and feet of Jesus with whatever that looks like. Now, now Wesley Mission, we, we've got 2,400 staff, more than 60 sites, New South Wales, Sydney, around Australia. Where do our chaplains work? Our chaplains are pretty much based everywhere. Everywhere there's a program, our chaplains are there. Most of our chaplains um, look after multi-sites, so they may um, be in maybe three or four different programs, facilities, that kind of thing. So pretty much every day a chaplain's somewhere different. We don't have a home base, and that's intentional um, for all our chaplains, and that's if we had a home base, we'd never get out of there. So pretty much we work with the managers and the staff of where we go each day. And how many chaplains do we have? We have 14 chaplains. Wow. Some are full-time, some are part-time. Um, and they're an incredible, passionate bunch of people who are here just to serve. How, how does that provided differently across the various aspects of our work? I mean, we've got people uh, in aged care settings, and we have kids in out-of-school care settings and everything in between. All the different generations, different demographics, different places of our nation. How does it look different? So pretty much, you know, if you're going to like an aged care facility, the chaplains are very much there one-on-one, -on -one, visiting clients, um, building relationships with clients, very client-based. They're also there supporting staff. When you've got something, and they're there physically, a physical presence. When you're looking at, say, um, our USH programs, um, pretty much the chaplain there, his name's Sam, and he's building relationship with the staff and building relationship with the families that utilise that service. So we say at USH, it's a service that we provide for families that would like support with us. There's newsletters going out, and we're finding, especially in this season right now, that a lot of our, a lot of our families that utilise our USH program, they're hurting. Mm. And so they're reaching out to our chaplain through phone calls, through emails, that kind of a thing. And I think that's the beauty of chaplaincy. We get to be the hands and feet of Jesus with whatever, with whatever that looks like mm. at that time. That's awesome. I mean, so many people, 160,000 people we serve in a typical year. I mean, 14 chaplains. How do you cover all those bases? We don't sleep. No, we do sleep. Um, pretty much we cover it because we work very closely with our, with our frontline staff. And so our frontline staff, I guess, would almost um, triage the need that comes to us. So, you know, the most crucial at that point in time, they would call us and we would go there immediately to that particular client or that particular need. And we just get really creative. So we do newsletters, we do emails, we do all kinds of things. We work really hard to... Um, be part of the mission that's known and not strangers. That's the biggest heartbeat that I do with our team is let's be, let's be known. Yeah. Let's be known amongst our teams. Let's be known amongst our staff. So we'll do stuff like we'll pop in at team meetings. We'll bring a devotion. Um, if we're in an office, we'll sit down and have lunch with the staff. Like we do everything we can to build that relationship with staff. And then through that, if staff trust us, then they'll trust us with the clients as well. Fantastic. And you're involved also, of course, at key moments in people's lives. You, you, you're conducting funeral services. You said you've been leading devotions, Bible studies. There's a whole range of different things that you're doing. Um, you want to share a bit about that? 
the heart of chaplaincy is that we'll do whatever it takes to be with people, with whatever that looks like. So, you know, often I will have a day planned. Hmm. I'll plan that I'm going to do a devotion at a team meeting, then I may be going to go and um, spend some time with a staff member. But one phone call can change my whole day. Yeah. And we very much are on the premise of we'll always, if we're going to like something with a lot of people um, versus there's a need for an individual, we'll always go to the individual. That's our priority. So, you know, a crisis can't wait. Popping in at a team meeting, that's really important. But if someone suddenly lost a loved one or we've had a client who's really unwell or whatever, we will always go to the individual over the crowd. And I guess it's very much like Jesus. Mm. Jesus always, he was with the masses, but he was with the individual. Now, you, you would experience a lot of joys, but also a lot of sorrows. You want to share a bit about the breadth of emotion that you can yeah. experience in this role? I think being a chaplain is the greatest honour and privilege and the best role at Wesley Mission. I can't think of a better role because we are, we're, we're with the highs, with the lows, like we will get invited to celebratory lunches when we've, when we've had something great happen. But then we can go from that setting to then you get a phone call where um, someone's just passed away or, or a young child's been rushed to hospital. Mm. So in one day you can mm. be in the highest of highs mm. and you can be in the lowest of lows. Jo, you've been with Wesley Mission for a number of years. Where did it all start for you, this journey? Prior to coming to Wesley Mission, I was a pastor in a local church, loved it, was on staff for a really long time, and just got to a place where I felt like I wanted to change. And so I always have loved people. So from a really young age, I've always loved people. It's what I wanted to do, lay my life down for people. So I got to a point where I felt my time in my local church on staff was coming to an end. So I thought, what can I do that can make a difference? And a friend of mine worked at Wesley Mission. And she said, have you ever thought about Wesley Mission? I said, I don't really know much about them. So I kind of found out. Then I applied for a role as a case manager in out-of-home care. I absolutely loved it. Um, I loved coming alongside of people. But at the same time, I missed the ministry side of what I had always done my whole working life. And I saw a role actually get advertised um, internally for a chaplain. But the funny thing was, it was advertised in Gosford and I lived in Sydney, so I never applied for it. <laughs> and I remember having a conversation with someone one time saying that you know, there was a chaplaincy role in his area that was based in Gosford. And it came back down the line to me going, no, 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 it can be anywhere. So I thought, that's me, because that's working in the community. It's using my pastoral skills, everything I would love to do. So long story short, I applied for that role um, and I got offered it. And the area that was my portfolio was everything related to families and children, which has always been my passion. It's what I love. So I started serving there and loving it. And then beginning of COVID, um, phone call was made just sort of saying, look, would you consider taking on the chaplaincy team? And it's funny because prior to being offered the role, I felt like there was it was going to happen. It was almost like God had prepared my heart. Yeah. So my answer was yes. And, um, and I love it. I love leading this team because everyone on our team is passionate about Jesus. We're all very unique. We're all very diverse. You've got the extroverts, probably like myself. And then you've got the quieter achievers who are just beautiful. And in a team, you need everything. You can't have 14 extroverts. You need people skilled in different areas. Absolutely. And so we've got that. So that's kind of my journey of how I came here. Yeah. And, um, and I love it. I love that no day is the same. Mm. I love that you literally, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. Mm. And I love that Wesley Mission is a Christian organisation. It's been birthed out of Jesus, been birthed out of a local church. And I feel that our role as chaplains is to bring that back into the centre of what we do. Yeah. So local church pastor, leading a chaplaincy team in between working out of home care as a case manager. How important was that season in preparing you to understand the ethos and how a community services organisation, we're also a church, how, you know, the difference with what your local church experience had been? Look, I think if I hadn't been a, a minister in a local church, I hadn't done out of home care, I couldn't do this role. Hmm. I feel like Wesley Mission is so unique. We are a local church. Yeah, we are. Um, but we have a real community focus. And I think having been able to work in both those fields prior to taking on this role has given me an understanding of how a local church runs, but also how community services run out of a church. Mm -hmm. And I think working as a case manager at Wesley Mission before I started this role, 
it gives me an aware, it gives me an understanding. And when I can sit with a case manager going mm. through, maybe how do I do this, Joe? And I'm not quite sure. I can actually go, I've been there. Yeah. I actually have been there. I, I can understand. So I think it gives empathy. Mm. And I think um, being part of a local church and now part of a local church with a very community focus, I can wear both hats. Yeah. So what's been most challenging about the role? I think most challenging about the role is I started it in the middle of COVID. So I started it like basically May last year. So I started running this team when we couldn't meet face to face, when we couldn't go into offices, when we couldn't do all this stuff. So that, I found that really, really challenging. Um, and I feel like the team um, was awesome, but we hadn't really done much as a team. So trying to gather everyone was quite difficult. Herding cats? Yeah, literally, because everyone was passionate about their thing, but we'd never really worked as a team, per se. We'd all been, um, I guess, silo in our areas, and everyone was doing amazing at that. But my heart with this, and I know Rick's heart with this, was to bring us together as a team. Hmm. So that's probably been... Um, a challenge, but now it's awesome because I feel like we are really connected as a team. I feel like everyone on the team has got certain strengths that others don't have. And then mm. like, I feel when we look, I feel if we look at us as, you know, individual chaplains, we've all got weaknesses and we've all got strengths. When I look at us as a team, I think there's nothing our team can't do. I love that. It's the beauty of a team when you come together and you have those complimentary gifts. Yeah. What's been the most rewarding thing? Perhaps tell us a story that sticks out for you. I think the most rewarding thing um, is seeing how coming alongside of someone actually makes a really big difference. I can even think of a story over the last, the last fortnight where, you know, I received an email quite late at night from one of our operations manager who is amazing and um, just saying, look, we, we've got this particular, we've had a particular COVID case that's happened and there's some people that need to be contacted daily just to make sure that they're okay because they may end up in isolation. And so I was like, this is an amazing opportunity for us, a chaplaincy team. Like, the, the frontline workers don't necessarily have the time to sit on a phone for an hour and hear someone's story. So we saw that as what an amazing opportunity. So as a chaplaincy team, we all started calling these particular um, clients and we've been doing that daily for the last 10 days. And the, um, the feedback we've had from the clients is amazing. Like, they look forward to the phone call from the chaplain. And I think that's an... And that's a particular area that could be really hard, really challenging for those clients. But being able to come alongside of them and do that journey with them and see them coming through the other side is actually beautiful. So we're developing a new field-based approach to chaplaincy. What's that all about? So pretty much what we want to try and do is to, you know, there's only 14 chaplains. There's two and a half thousand staff and so many clients. So what we're trying to do is we really want to link our chaplaincy in with local churches as well. Like allow, allow local churches to get involved in what we're doing. I think the beautiful thing that Wesley Mission is known for, our local church, Wesley Mission is known for, is we have a, a, a community footprint. And so one, and I think a lot of local churches would love that community footprint, but they actually don't have that yet. What we'd love to see is our chaplains building relationships with local churches mm. to allow their local mission to be with our clientele and to be raising people up from other churches to come alongside, support people in really vulnerable situations. All right, so what would volunteer chaplains do? Pretty much what volunteer chaplains would do is they would work alongside of our team. Mm -hmm. So say if we um, were in you know, um, regional New South Wales, for example, and maybe there is... Um, a child that's really suffering that maybe needs some mentoring, we could grab a chaplain, a volunteer chaplain, to come and help with that child, help them um, through schooling, help them just being an extra person in their world. If someone's listening to our conversation today and felt the tug on their heart to be involved in chaplaincy ministry with Wesley Mission or with another organisation like us, what would you say to them? Please do it. Get in contact with us. Give, give Wesley Mission a call. Get in contact with me because we would love to help you serve in a chaplaincy field because the need is so great mm. and we'll never ever run out of need but we do run out of actually having the hands to help with that need so there's always a need so please if that's something that you feel called to do please do it be confident and I think sometimes we think I don't have this skill set this therefore I'm no good but you know what a heart that wants to help others and a heart that's teachable and a heart that loves Jesus that can be moulded and worked with and you become the most amazing chaplain. That's a pretty powerful invitation, Joe. I mean, why do you do what you do? I mean, th th this is a, a role that has enormous highs, enormous lows, very demanding. Why do what you do? 
I do what I do because from a really young age, I can think of even the age of five or six, I was brought up in a Christian home with parents that always built the local church. I remember seeing what my parents did and always in my heart, I thought, I want to make a difference for others. And I want to give people an opportunity to find Jesus, ultimately, um, through the love of what we do. And I really feel like coming alongside of someone is the greatest joy and the greatest privilege. And there is highs and there is lows, but lows don't always stay low. And the thing that I love about chaplaincy is you can be in that lowest point with someone and you can do it. It's not an instant fix, but if you do a journey with someone, you do see them come through that low and turn it into a high. Fantastic. Joe, thanks so much for all that you do. The, all that your team does is so much a part of the fabric of who uh, Wesley Mission is today and will be into the future. And God bless you and your future endeavours, particularly with this new approach to chaplaincy that you're embarking upon.